ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center. Good evening Bahamas, I'm Kelsey Johnson. Welcome to Sports Tuesday. It's about to get a little hotter in the Bahamas. The Miami Heat basketball organization is expected to turn up the heat when they return to the court for preseason training. Here's Amajal Knowles with a play-by-play -play breakdown. Mega Resort getting some major praise as it plays host to some top executives of a major basketball organization. Miami executive staff holding an exclusive team dinner at the Bahama Resort last evening. And Vice President of Corporate Sponsorship Chris Marangano says he's been blown away at the level of service at the resort. It's a new resort and uh, we're very excited to be here and everybody here is extremely impressed with everything that's happening. So we've been people on the beach, at the pool, enjoying the spa and we actually, you know, some people have even asked me for the fish, fish fry. So, <laughs> you know, that's, my, that's where I want to be but uh, we'll do, maybe we'll do that another time but this has been a, a really five star experience for us. Margano adding that the team values its long-standing relationship with the Bahamas as evidenced by years of collaboration. Bahamas we feel have really embraced us uh, as a as a the organization as fans and and supported us and we like to support this community as well so from our, our head coach to our players, they all enjoy coming here. They enjoy coming to training camp here the last couple of, uh, over the last few years. And we will be back here for training camp at some point. Um, and, um, you know, that has really brought it, it uh, to a, a level that is, is really high on our list. So when we're thinking about entertaining our clients, we think about the Bahamas. When we're thinking about, um, working with the tourism office and and developing uh, programs for our fans to come to the Bahamas. It just makes total sense because of the proximity and everything that you guys have to offer. Now for the big question, how soon can it be that we see an NBA game played on Bahamian soil? Well, Maragano is saying it's in the realm of possibility. Preseason or exhibition not out of the real, It's not out of the possibility that something like that could happen down the road, but that would have to be a, a major collaboration with another team, uh, the NBA as well, and who knows? It could be something we look forward to in the not, in, in the near future. Who knows? From a basketball standpoint, for all of you Heat fans out there, Margano saying that despite the first round ousting this year, the team expects to be back and better next year and plans to be a major contender. For ZNS Total Sports, I'm Amajal Nol. Thank you so much, Amajal. Sloop sailing can arguably be the biggest sporting event which brings Bahamians together no matter where they are held. The unwavering support shown at the various regatters has prompted Minister with Responsibility for Regatters, the Honorable Wenwood Wells, to use the technology, creating ways for all to be a part of the festivities. We are headed in a direction where regatters will be brought into the living rooms, sports bar, tablets, laptops and cell phones of our people and the people around the globe. We are serious about our commitments to Regatta and I have heard nothing but good things about this video live streaming technical addition to the Regatta here in Long Island. Echoing the words of Minister Wells, who is responsible for regarders, Deputy Prime Minister the Honorable Peter Turnquest, reaffirmed the government's commitment to making Regatta the national sport of the Bahamas. I want to, to assure Long Islanders and regatta enthusiasts throughout this country of the continued commitment of the government to supporting these cultural events. We understand that sailing is a very important part of not only who we are, but into the livelihood and the, the economic well-being of these communities. And so we are committed to supporting them. And as the minister indicated, we are giving very serious commitment and I believe favorable attention to making sloop sailing the national sport of the Bahamas as it rightly should be. South Andros Regatta will not be left out when this initiative is implemented. Our Charles Fisher was in the big yard on the weekend catching the waves at the annual South Andros Regatta. Here's his report. A low tide forcing the C-Class sloops to sail all three of their series races in one day. Defending champ Revelation 319 taking two of the three to repeat with Clay Moxie aboard the tiller. In two years in a row, I thank God that I was able to hold 
the, 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 the floating trophy for last year and this year, and hoping to hold it again next year. Teamwork put together, we done it by teamwork. Without teamwork, we couldn't do it at all. So we have to thank all of the skippers who was involved with the sailing, and that's what makes us so great today. The other series race in Class C was taken by Bull Raleigh, whose crew Calvin Lloyd and Derek Taylor felt they let this one slip away. I was supposed to win two or three races, but he had me on the last race, so thank my skipper, it's a captain. He did a wonderful job. The boats are good today, and I think next year, when we come back, we'll give them more competition. Richard Anson Sally, the beast from the east, pulling in third. We had a lot of problems at start, from the start. Um, my boat sunk in Mangrove Key, and getting it back on track was very difficult, but we pull it through. We break a rigging from the race start, but we still do it. You know, I'm, I'm happy and pleased. Weather and sea was perfect for the E-Class. They sailed two on Friday and one on Saturday. And nothing changed from race to race with Lloyd Sands skippering Judge Monday to wins in all three. Yeah, it was a, a good race too. Um, we had three, two good days of sailing, beautiful weather, and the boat performed pretty well. Now while the grown-ups were having fun on the seas, one thing is for sure, the kids sure had a ball on the line. For Zedna Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. Thank you so much, Fisher. The work is not done for the country's water polo teams. The three gold medals won at the Carifta Water Polo Championships was just the beginning for the squads who are preparing for international competition. We're going to participate in the Sunshine State game, which will be held in Florida, Fort Lauderdale, just days before El Salvador. So the team going to go to Fort Lauderdale, will participate in an American competition, turn around, fly down to El Salvador, hopefully qualify, come home. That's what I like to see. It takes dedication, hard work, and commitment to become a professional athlete. That's why Coach Trevano Mackey is making sure that those swimmers in his club make a splash every day. We always speak about uh, morning practices, uh, getting up at 5 o'clock before school. Uh, some kids are in the water before school. After school, they're in the water until uh, the sun goes down. So it takes a lot of hard training. And uh, some kids are doing very, very, very well. Uh, we are getting prepared also for CC Can. That's coming up after nationals, so this summer, this summer is very, very, very huge for some summers. And um, yeah, just the hard training, the hard work pays off. The Bahamas is one of a few countries in the Caribbean that can brag about having more than 15 professional baseball players. This number can increase in the next few days as the Major League Baseball draft is underway. So far, no Bahamians have been selected. However, moving up the ranks was Anthony Seymour. He was called up on Saturday to play in the double A. Well, that's all the time we have for sports. I'm Kelsey Johnson.